Hi, this is Esther Lin for MMAfighting.com. I'm here with Jose Youngs, and we are here for UFC Fight Night Denver at the 25th anniversary of the UFC. Yes, in Denver, 25 years almost exactly. I don't know if it's the exact date, but 25 years ago, UFC 1 was in Denver. Hoist Gracie emerged victorious, and 25 years later, we're here. For Yara Rodriguez versus the Korean Zombie. The Korean Zombie. So tell me. Uh, how is this fight going to go with both of these guys coming off such a long layoff? Yeah, not even just long layoffs. The Korean Zombie, he fought Jose Aldo in 2013, was going to come back, injured his knee, and that went right into his mandatory military service. For, for those of you who don't know, people, men in South Korea, they ha they, they're required to serve two years in the military. Went through that, came back, knocked out Dennis Bermudez, February 2017, Super Bowl weekend in Houston. Uh, and I actually thought ring rust was going to play a huge factor because he injured, military service, returns, main event, five rounds, big card, wins by knockout. Mm -hmm. Yair Rodriguez last fought UFC 211 in Dallas against Frankie Edgar. He's old, that was 2017 too, May 2017. Since then, he's gone through some controversy where he was quote unquote cut, fake news, whatever. Uh, Come re-signed, maybe, I don't, maybe. Uh, supposed to face Zabit, UFC 220 in Dallas. Everyone got really excited for that. Zabit actually called him out. Mm -hmm. He got the fight. Yair wasn't even, didn't even want that fight until the fans got behind it. Gets injured, pulls out of that fight, and now he's filling in for an injured Frankie Edgar against the Korean Zombie. I don't know what, if Korean Zombie wins, what this does for him, because a win over Frankie Edgar that catapults him to maybe within a win of a title shot, right. maybe if he wins in emphatic fashion, that gets him the title shot. But in terms of martial arts, I love this fight. I mean, these guys are very exciting. Korean Zombie is one of the most exciting fighters in WEC, UFC history. I mean, we were on the live stream, we were talking about uh, one of the fight of the years against Lennon Garcia in WEC. Right. Uh, submission of the year when he got the first twister in his UFC debut against Lennon Garcia in the rematch. Six second knockout against Mark Hominick, and then gets fight of the year, submission of the year in the same night against Dustin Poirier in probably my favorite fight ever. Then fights Jose Aldo, shoulder pops out, pushes it back in in the middle of the fight, still loses. Yair Rodriguez knocks out BJ Penn. I believe he was the first one to score a knockdown on BJ Penn in that fight, and he finished BJ Penn. Faces Frankie Edgar, a little bit of a step from right. BJ Penn in 2017 to Frankie Edgar in 2017. Comes up short, takes all this time off. So a lot of questions surrounding this, but in terms of just martial arts, take the title shot, take the main event out of the equation, I absolutely love this fight. Given all of the, those factors, then who are you picking to win the fight? I'm going to have to say Korean Zombie. I mean, he's fought better, he's fought more high caliber competition. Uh, he's fought the Dustin Poiriers. Yeah, Lena Garcia ended up having that big uh, losing streak, but he was always in there. Uh, he's fought, he's been in there with Jose Aldo. He got to the fourth round against Aldo and only lost because of an injury. Uh, he was preparing for Frank Edgar, so he was in camp. Yayo Rodriguez said when he got the call, he was eating a cheeseburger and drinking a beer, and he still made weight. Very easily, it looks like. So I'm going to have to say Korean Zombie. Uh, Frank Yeager kind of showed you yeah, he's not as strong on the ground. You mm -hmm. have to wonder how much he's worked on that in this long layoff. Korean Zombie's bread and butter. Yeah, he's he scored that flying knee on Dustin Poirier, but then set it up for the dart, set up the dart stroke off of that. So his skill set seems to. Uh, overpower uh, Yair's weaknesses. So I'm gonna have to say Korean Zombie, he's been in fight camp and just, yeah, Korean Zombie. But if he wins, you were saying, um, if he had won over at Frankie Edgar, yeah. he might have gotten that title shot, but now what happens if he wins? I would say if Korean Zombie wins, I would rebook both of their original fights. I would rebook Yair against a beat. That's a fight fans really wanted. I mean, Yair didn't want it, and then he saw how much fans wanted that, that he's like, well, yeah, like if fans want it, I'll do it. Like it'll, it's, it'll, they'll hype it up. And if Korean Zombie wins, I would immediately rebook him against Frankie Edgar. I mean, Frankie Edgar said it wasn't that serious of an injury. Mm. He just couldn't go through camp with it. So maybe that first ESPN card in February, I mean, Frankie Edgar versus Korean Zombie can mm. headline a Fox card. Why not headline an ESPN card? So I would just rebook both of those fights. That makes sense. If they're healthy, because you never know with those guys. All right. Let's move down to the co-main uh, between the local, Donald Cerrone, yeah. and Mike Perry. Yeah, my best friend. <laughs> Your best friend. Uh, Mike Perry doesn't like your hair. Nope, too friendly. Too friendly. Um, but outside of that, how do you, how would you see the fight going between these this two? This is one of those fights where like Donald Cerrone has never had an easy fight. This kind of reminds me of when Donald Cerrone got matched up with uh, Robbie Lawler. Mm -hmm. It was like Cerrone versus a former lightweight coming up to fight a legitimate welterweight, and everyone was like, "Oh, fight of the fight of the night, fight of the night, fight of the night." It's three rounds. Mm -hmm. uh, it is the co-main event. 
we were talking, history is not on Donald Cerrone's side no. when he fights in Denver. I mean, he did say his the best memory he's ever had in the WC or UFC was his win over Melvin Gillard here in Denver. Yeah. Lost to Hori Mazzaval in Denver. Uh, but we were saying, again, like he had fought Matt Brown in December and then came back way too early to yeah. fight Hori Mazzaval in January, came up short. The open workouts, people were screaming for Cowboy when Korean Zombie was warming yeah, up. Yeah, so for hours they were screaming in his name. And then he came out, didn't even warm up, and just took pictures and signed autographs for the fans. So Denver absolutely loves Donald Cerrone. Uh, the big story is obviously Donald Cerrone left Jackson Winklejohn. Uh, he has serious beef with Mike Winklejohn, said he's not going to squash it. Says Mike Perry has nothing to do with it. Actually, Greg Jackson's not even going to be here in Donald Cerrone's corner. Uh, Donald Cerrone or, told us, or, Mike or Mike Perry's. Uh, Cerrone said at the scrums when I asked him, uh, he didn't want uh, Greg Jackson to be training with Mike Perry or around Mike Perry and then coming to his gym and quote unquote go, going in the back door and giving him a secret weapon. He's like, I'm a stand up guy, that's not fair to Mike, so we're just going to cut that out of the equation. Uh, Donald seems much more calm, mm -hmm. obviously. He's the oldest fighter on this card, which is just insane to think about. He's 35, yeah. he's a new dad, this is his first fight as, as a father. Uh, we were talking to, to, Macy, to Macy and she's like, yeah, like I remember watching Donald on TV. It's like crazy to see him walking around. Donald has, rep, has like accepted he's the old man. He's like, yeah, I love it. I'll come in in a walker and everything. Yeah, in the face-off, actually, Mike Perry said he was old. He's like, yeah, I'm old. I'm old. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I've been here, man. Like, what do you, what is Cowboy Cerrone seeing that Mike Perry, like, like, he went through that Nate Diaz thing, and that was kind of the eye-opening thing in 2011. He was like, yeah, I can't let people get into my head. Mm -hmm. uh, Cowboy was laughing at Mike Perry yes. during the stare-down. Like, uh, Mike Perry did his whole flexing thing, like getting in his yeah. face and everything. Even like when they faced the cameras, Mike Perry was like posing, and Donald and Cowboy was just laughing the whole time. Yeah. So Mike Perry is obviously like hyped for this fight. Cowboy's always hyped for a fight. He said he's gonna stand and bang with him, but obviously, from our experiences, when people say like, "Yeah, I'll stand with you," it usually never happens. Yeah, and Cerrone's uh, ground game is so underrated. Very underrated. And I feel like that's pretty much Perry's glaring weakness. Yeah, and Perry's only won one decision. And that was his last one, his split decision against Paul Felder, who was a lightweight coming up just to fill in. Uh, you have to think if he goes to a decision, it'll probably go Cowboy's way. He's won, he's obviously won a bunch of decisions. He's gonna set a lot of UFC records. If he wins with a finish, I believe this breaks the record for most finishes, most wins, all that. He says he wants the most walks, he wants the most head kicks. So Cowboy is climbing up these UFC record books. Uh, Mike Perry said he recognized that. Like He said Cowboy is a legend. He's a living mm -hmm. legend, but he's, the only record he's going to get after fighting me is most walks. He's not going to win. He's not going to finish me, but I'm going to pick Cowboy. Uh, Three-round fight. I, I don't know. I just something about Cowboy fighting in this uh, environment for all these records. Uh, like you said, Mike Perry's ground game is, is, seems to be his weakness. Cowboy's like his triangle, his off his back is unbelievable. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go cowboy. I'll say submission. So besides um, breaking all these records, yeah. if cowboy wins, what does he get? Well, I know he wants a 160 pound, pound title. I mean, he's like 165. I'm there. And if the UFC 125 pound division is indeed getting like abolished, then they add 165. Cowboy's going there. Yeah. He said he, he said he was gonna go to 155 after this, but he's been saying that for his last three fights. So. Yeah. There's a lot of question marks, especially if he wins, like, if he wins emphatically and easily, like, if he pulls off another Rick Story win or a Matt Brown win, he's a welterweight on a big, on, a, on this big victory, he might stay. If yeah. they add 165, he might drop to 165. So right. Cowboy's future is a lot more up in the air. He says his last goal is, I need a belt. He's going to be smarter about it. He's not going to just take fights. Mike Perry just wants to fight all the time. He said he would fight at the open workouts. He said he'd fight after media day. He probably wanted to fight me after media day. He'd probably fight. He's got, he'd probably fight today. So uh, it really depends. Uh, I know him and Ben Askren kind of had a thing mm -hmm. on Twitter. They're obviously not going to fight. Uh, a, a win for Mike Perry would move him. Mo would do more for him in the welterweight division, just mm -hmm. because Cowboy's probably not even going to stay here. So yeah, uh, um, there, there's more at stake. I think for for in the welterweight division, there's 100 percent more at stake for Mike Perry in this fight. Where would Mike Perry go after this if he wins? I don't know. I mean. I would have said, like a few months ago, I would have said Darren Till because, I mean, they got in each other's faces, but now they're like best friends. <laughs> uh, Robbie Lawler is supposed to fight uh, Ben Askren in friends, January. Though. It's true. Uh, ben Askren is supposed to fight Robbie Lawler on, in January at UFC 233. Mm -hmm. I know uh, 
Mike Perry's always wanted that Robbie Lawler right. fight. I know fans would probably want that Robbie Lawler fight. Hey, Sage Northcutt's out there. Uh, Sage Northcutt is a free agent. He mm -hmm. was in Singapore, so, but if he doesn't sign with one, I bet you Sage Northcutt doesn't realize that people like Mike Perry exist in the world, and I bet you Mike Perry doesn't realize people like Sage Northcutt are in the world. I would love that fight. It would do nothing for rankings. I just, it would be amazing to watch Mike Perry getting in his face, flexing, and then Sage Northcutt just like cheesing, and then Sage Northcutt probably poses better than Mike Perry. Yeah. Just have a pose off on stage, why not? So <laughs> Mike Perry versus Sage Northcutt, let's do it. We have to talk about Raquel Pennington missing yeah. weight against uh, Jermaine Durandamy. Yeah. Uh, she looked pretty bad on the she scale. She looks very rough. <laughs> And she had spoken at Media Day about how it's been getting more and more difficult for her to make weight. She has her thyroid issues. So tell me what you think is going to happen about with this fight, especially uh, with that factor, who you think might win. This is a very weird fight. I mean, Raquel told us, like she, like she said, every weight cut is harder. I mean, she's like, being cutting weight as a woman is harder. You go through more things. Like, just earlier this month, Sarge said the same thing when she missed weight in New York. When I asked her to elaborate on it, she's like, Women go through these things like hormones, and they don't like your body just doesn't want to lose water. Uh, she's she she kept bringing up the weight cut, and it kind yeah. of put in the back of your head like, is this gonna be a hard weight cut? Yeah. And then she said, every weight cut is the hardest weight cut I've ever had. It's never gotten easier. It's only gotten harder and harder and harder. But like you said, she didn't look unhealthy when she made championship weight no, not against at all. Amanda Nunes. So in my mind, I was like, well, she just made one. She just made one thirty-five. Like one thirty-six shouldn't be a problem. She came all the way to the end, pretty much. Like yes. she had like five minutes left to weigh in. She, as soon as she walked out, she looked completely sucked out. Completely done. Tisha Torres was there. Her partner looked just very nervous, very worried, frantic. Like she just wanted to get it over with. She was more nervous for Raquel than Raquel was. Yeah. There was some confusion where she waited in the back and then she knew she was gonna miss weight, so she was just gonna get on. But they made her strip and stand around, get the hoop out, and you could see Tisha just like talking to her, calming yeah. her down and everything. She missed weight by two pounds. Uh, did not not look great, uh, but again, she kept bringing up the weight cut during media day, right. so it's, it really wasn't a surprise. I saw Jermaine later walk into the, uh, the elevator, and I kind of overheard her. She's like, if she wants to fight, I'll fight, so the fight's gonna happen. Right. Jermaine, though, former featherweight champion, I, I, like, she's the inaugural UFC Women's Featherweight Champion. Everyone yes. keeps, kind of forgets that. She hasn't fought since then. UFC 208, Yair's fought, like, closer to that, closer to now than she has. Yeah. Uh, beat Holly Holm. Uh, Raquel Pennington says she doesn't even think she won that fight. Right. But Raquel also says she doesn't think she's a dirty fighter. Jermaine Durandamy did have those two late uh, punches after the bell against Holly, but Raquel just shook it off. Uh, yeah. You have to go with Jermaine. I was yeah. thinking uh, Raquel until I saw her on the scale. Uh, Jermaine looked absolutely ecstatic to step up there. Yep. She's just happy to be back. She wanted to fight. She's back at her natural weight class of 135. So you have to go Jermaine. She's just, she's the healthy fighter. Yeah. And Raquel, Raquel said she was, she took the Amanda fight when she wasn't ready. Yeah. She's basically like, she took that fight, she took one leg kick, it was like, I, I took this fight too soon. Yeah. It was in Brazil, it's obviously, like you were saying, harder to cut weight in Brazil. Uh, yeah, it's Jermaine, all signs point to Jermaine in this fight. Yeah. What's going to happen to, uh, but it's kind of weird because we don't know where either woman will end up. If yeah. Raquel wins, what's next for her? If Jermaine wins? you don't think they're going to give her a title shot at no. that so. I mean, it's the whole 135 pound division is kind of up in the air because Amanda's fighting Cyborg. Like, say Amanda does beat Cyborg, does she stay at 135? Right. Like, if Jermaine wins emphatically, there's a lot of fights to make uh, at 145. Even Kat Zingano is fighting Megan Anderson at 145. She told, she was on the MMA hour, said she wants belts at both weight classes. So the 135 pound division is kind of, not on hold, but there's not there's a lot of things that need to play out through December before you can really start matchmaking at Bantamweight, I think. Mm. Are there any other storylines on this card that you really want to hit on? I mean, Macy Barber's making her UFC debut. She's 20. She's coming off a contender series. She's from Colorado. She seems to be loving doing media. I mean, she 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 made way on the second try. She came in uh, slightly heavy. She came back, made it, but didn't look terrible. Like, no. she didn't look miserable. Like. She made the weight smiling, and she's like, I told you, like, like maybe there was just something wrong with her scale, yeah. or something like that. She had an open workout, and she's, her and Raquel were the only two fighters not in the two top two fights that had an open workout. She came over, she loved doing the media. Yep. She told us all, I'm 20, I'm going to be the, the, the 
youngest UFC champion ever. That's her goal. She called out Mackenzie Dern, so she seems to be taking that, uh, like when Israel Adesanya came to the UFC, he's like, I know who I want to fight next. She's like, already making She knows point. what she wants. She's laying her path out, mm -hmm. smart. So if she plants that seed, like she says, she says Mackenzie's missed uh, Ducter twice in LFA. If the history's there, and she's already planned to see now, and she beats Cypher on Saturday, I mean, I don't know what, I, I'd watch it. I mean, she made me want to watch it. She talked me into wanting that fight. On the flip side, Cypher, probably an antithesis of Conor McGregor. Right, what, and how Cypher's, I think, is gonna, is poised to play the spoiler in this. For because sure. I don't know if you saw her forearms, but she looks like Popeye. She yeah. is she's very, very quiet, but very, very strong. Oh yeah, I mean we she came out for Media Day and you could kind of see her coach just being like, breathe, like it's all we're good, like you can do this. And she came in, sat down, like was visibly shaking during Media Day. And it was just a scrum. It wasn't a it wasn't like a legitimate media day. There was maybe us and a few other reporters ask a question, she would say one, she would be like, yes, like, oh, are you excited to be here? UFC debut, big UFC 25th anniversary. She'd be like, yeah, I'm excited. And then like, that was it. Like, that was the longest thing most we got out of her. But it was kind of endearing. A lot of the comments, like, a lot of the tweets I got were about Mike Perry yelling at me and her. <laughs> Yeah. Because it was just was so endearing to watch, like, and then on Twitter, people were tweeting at her like, "Oh, why don't you like doing media? Like, you gotta talk." She's like, "I like to fight. Yeah. I just want to fight. Like, yeah. I don't like doing this, but I like fighting." Uh, like you said, her forums are pretty huge. Uh, I was overhearing like her coach saying like she has like farm strength. Like, yeah. there's like videos of pictures of her like lifting tractors and stuff. So. She is very poised to make to play the spoiler. She made weight with ease, obviously. Like yeah. you said, she looks more like an atom weight. Yeah. But if her opponent's struggling to make weight and she's making with ease, she's like what? She has a legitimate record. Her only two losses were to UFC fighters now. Uh, so she's I would have been not I would not be surprised mm -hmm. if uh, Cypher pulled this uh, upset off. All right. And then uh, um are there any else? Any yeah, else we have to talk about Violent Bob Ross. Okay. We have to. I yeah. mean, outside of the top two fights, I think most people are hyped on Luis Pena. Luis Pena, because even he told us, no one knows his name. I mean, I go, do you, I, I straight up asked him, do fans know who you are? He goes, people know me as Bob. They think my name is Robert. And I was like, would, if I was walking down the hall and I said, hey, Bob, what would you do? He's like, I'd probably turn around. So like. He's now in that like rampage, Mirko yeah. Krokop, GSP, like you know their names, but he's just violent Bob Ross to everyone. Yes. He thinks that he is the uncrowned uh, tough champion. He got injured that season, so he never got a, the, the shot to, to fight uh, Mike Trezano in the finale, who, who beat Joe Giannetti, uh, so who then got cut. To... Exactly. Mike, Mike Trezano's like, the season's over. Like He's yeah. like, I'm the champion, this is just my next fight. Fight. Luis Pena is like, I... There's no would have he, would he have won? I, if I had fought, I would be the champion mm -hmm. of, of the tough. I would be the tough champion. He's also said he's been the main train one of the main training partners of Habib when Habib was preparing for Connor as like wrestling. Nine weeks of wrestling with Habib. What is Mike Trezano going to bring to the table that Habib's not bring? Yeah. Or even just AKA being around all these Dagestanis. Like, there's he's doing a vlog. Like when they were doing the vlogs uh, with uh, Habib, you see like Luis with. Uh, Daniel Cormier and like Javier Mendez and everything like he he was like he was hoping Daniel would call this fight mm -hmm. because then it would be like a funny banter with him like on the mic and everything so Luis Pena looks very much the part yeah. uh, he came in looking in great shape mm -hmm. uh, just training with Habib though for nine weeks is kind of like I, I think he wins this fight uh, thanks very much Mr. Friendly Hair yeah thanks for having me on hopefully have more to come after this yeah you did a great job um, there's more to come from us as well. Uh, all the coverage from UFC Fight Night Denver. You should stick to MMAfighting.com for all the photos, videos, interviews, all that great stuff you know that we will have for you uh, tomorrow. I'm Esther. This is Jose. And thanks a lot.